Facebook has enacted an emergency shutdown of two artificial intelligence programs. The social media giant leapt into action after it discovered the two programs were writing their own code. At first they thought it was simply gibberish, but they soon realised the programs had invented their own language and were actually talking to each other. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. No, Sam, the plug has been pulled on the operation, but the company admits they have no idea what the two robots were planning. What if I told you that even the worst neighbourhood in America could be made completely safe? How do I know this? Because it's happening right now in every country in the world but this one. It is great to see American machines helping to promote peace abroad. So then tell me, why can't we use these machines here at home? So I'm going to stand right here. Okay, I don't want to block it. Welcome to Milaika, Mr. President of Asimov, a humanoid robot. It is a pleasure to meet you. Well, it's nice to meet you, too. <laughs> Why is America so robophobic? <laughs> We need to give Americans a product they can love, a figure they can rally behind. We can't put a machine on the street. Forget machines. They want a product with a conscience. Something that knows what it feels like to be human. There are three Geminoid robots in the world. DK is the first with a non-Japanese character. He's now helping Professor Scharfe at Halberg University in Denmark to study human-robot interaction and how far we're prepared to let that relationship go. Imagine, for instance, you have someone like this sitting at a kindergarten telling stories. Now, people usually object to this idea. Give me my kiss. My baby. Too slow, boy. We're going to put a man inside a machine. Time to wake him up. Make him more tactical. Let's go with black. Quality control, EM-208 versus Tin Man. Wow. We are going to make a lot of money. With artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. The experts warned they could be as deadly as nuclear weapons. Just like in the famous Hollywood blockbuster Iron Man, the wearable robotic device. Just to be clear, decades, like the romance are, between uh, humans and pieces. robots yeah, will be a right common thing. Are four, five, ten pieces each. Yeah. Piece. yeah. The, those are the easy ones to figure out where they go. Yeah. Just figure out how the pistons grab into all the parts of the chest, chassis, etc. That was the most of them. And which are the little pistons for the chest, which are the little pistons for the arm. Yes. Like Once you got going, did you kind of figure it out? I did. Or did you I had to, go, I had to custom machine some pieces like these pistons.
I would do it. I keep so sounding the alarm bell, but you know, until people see like robots going down the street killing people, like they don't know how to react. And Musk should know. His company Tesla is a world leader in artificial intelligence, or AI. In 2017, the first sentient or artificial human goes online. Six months later, we're more advanced than any person or civilization could have imagined. This is the story of a future no one saw coming. Breaking news. They're capable of crime. The rumors of a sentient rebellion are true. People are living in fear. Violent clashes between sentients and humans. The whole world is watching. We are at the breaking point. The course of human history has changed today. The deployment of the planet's first robotic police units became the focus of the world in 2016. Drop your weapons, you are under arrest. And more is a former soldier. The problem with artificial intelligence is it's way too unpredictable. The scout's creator, Dion Wilson, sees a rich future. What interests me is a machine that can think and feel. I have a robot that is operated by a thinking human being. <laughs> We don't want this. It's expensive, it's big, and it's ugly. The Scouts are a huge success. Stop worrying about these pet projects. I think I've carved it. This is a new kind of life form, a new step in evolution. A thinking robot could be the end of mankind. Destroy that robot. Burn it to ash. Something of great danger headed our way now. Donald Trump is receiving a lavish royal welcome in Saudi Arabia, where he's kicking off his first foreign tour as U.S. president. And he's wasted no time getting down to business, heading straight to a meeting where he signed a number of defense and business deals totaling in excess of $380 billion, including an arms deal worth $110 billion. Trump is the first American president to make Saudi Arabia or indeed any Muslim-majority country his inaugural stop overseas, and says he's pleased with the progress so far. Most troubling questions is artificial intelligence, and I don't—I don't mean narrow AI like uh, vehicle autonomy. I would put in the narrow AI class. Um, it's narrowly trying to achieve a certain function, um, but deep artificial intelligence, or what is sometimes called artificial general intelligence, um, where you could have AI that is much sm much smarter than the smartest human on earth. This, I think, uh, is a dangerous 
situation. Tesla chief Elon Musk among a group of 116 founders of robotics and artificial intelligence companies who are calling on the United Nations to ban killer robots. You don't belong here. We know how to unwelcome a species. Oh, it must be so you can do so without guilt, without mercy. You aren't flesh. You have no soul. You can be so effective with your eradication. Because I know, deep down in my heart, I am not murdering. This is a recall. We have been looking everywhere for you. Under the streets, swept every alley, checked under every bed. You're the one that just keeps slipping away. He didn't provoke this. And it was over the moment one of your kind killed a human. An act of self-defense does not justify genocide. It's not genocide, you're not human. We have feelings. We have emotions. Robots were never supposed to have feelings. Technology stepped over the line. You made us. And we can unmake you. You did this. You pushed us to this. Today, you're going to tell me when the rest of your kind is hiding. I'm going to round up everyone you feel for them. And I'm going to hurt them. I'm going to hurt them bad. Do you believe I'm being sincere? Possession of an electronic device is punishable by termination. You know that. What is that? Leverage. Turn it off. You lost this war before it was even declared, Colonel. Turn it off. Turn it off now! This conversation is over. us hatred. We found compassion. And when you offered us death, we found a reason to live. We will survive, Colonel. We will always survive. sci-fi movie and into reality the u.s military wants robots in today's big eye we want to show you what the future of war could look like first let's start with who is in charge of technology developments for the military that is the u.s defense advanced research projects agency or darpa the, the, an agency that is the stuff of, of uh, mystery novels uh, and recently, we've noticed they've been beefing up on robots. Most recently, they contracted with... Donald Trump's received a lavish royal welcome in Saudi Arabia, where he's kicking off his first foreign tour as U.S. president.
and he's wasted no time getting down to business. Heading straight to a meeting where he signed a number of defence and business deals totalling in excess of $380 billion, including an arms deal worth $110 billion. Trump is the first American president to make Saudi Arabia or indeed any Muslim majority country his inaugural stop overseas and says he's pleased with the progress so far. I'd be the first Saudi citizenship for a robot. Oh, I would to thank very much the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I am very honored and proud for this unique distinction. want to bring in the man who heads the organization that launched that appeal for a ban on killer robots. That's Mac Tegmark, who is president of the Future of Life Institute. He's also a physics professor at MIT, from where he joins us now. And Mark, you're among the thousand artificial intelligence specialists who put together this open letter that we just mentioned. Tell us why you're calling for a global ban on killer robots, in specific details, if you can. Yeah, so... Uh, <clears throat> These uh, over a thousand world experts on AI are saying that artificial intelligence has huge benefits it can bring to society, from curing diseases to solving so many other problems where we need more intelligence. But uh, making autonomous offensive weapons is not one of those benefits, and that's something we should really steer clear of. For example, if uh, a bunch of drones just show up and start killing people, you have no idea who even sent them, and this makes them a perfect weapon for terrorists, uh, groups like ISIS, who can greatly benefit from acting anonymously and uh, with impunity.